Could we see a significant trade between the Boston Bruins and the Ottawa Senators? We'll discuss the possibilities coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. As I mentioned today, we're looking at the, a rumor going around about the Boston Bruins having interest in one of the young players involving the Ottawa Senators here. So, of course, let's just give you a little bit of context, a little bit of background. The article and the information being discussed today comes from Boston Hockey Now and author Jimmy Murphy. Uh, the Ottawa Senators basically are in a bit of a tight cap crunch like a lot of teams around the league. They've made a lot of changes this offseason, and they still have a pending restricted free agent that's not signed. So we got talking about Shane Pinto being the player of interest so of course when players are unsigned or there's word that they are you know having issues coming to terms there's always bound to be rumors about you know maybe a change of scenery maybe a trade other teams are trying to swoop in and see if they can get this player onto their team that's very common not surprised this is popping up in the rumor mill here one bit especially where the bruins are a team who needs help at the center position they just lost to retirement two of the Greatest centers they've had in the franchise with Patrice Bergeron and David Krejci. Uh, now leaves them with Pavel Zaka and Charlie Coyle and Morgan Geeky as your one, two, three down the middle. That's not exactly screaming championship caliber material. No offense to those guys, um, but it's just it's just not. It's a major downgrade from where they were before. All three, you could argue, would be better off served either on the third line or on the wing. So certainly adding a top six center would be something that the Bruins are going to be looking to do. Now, the Bruins have also been linked, and we've had conversations around their interest, their rumored interest in Mark Shifley in Winnipeg or Elias Lindholm in Calgary. Uh, Lindholm in Calgary is probably the most ideal fit. If you look at players who are either confirmed or suspected to be available for trade, he's the prototypical type. He's going to be the closest you're going to get. For what's available out there, at least one of the ones that would be closest to coming anywhere near what Patrice Bergeron gave this club. Now, Patrice Bergeron, in my opinion, cannot be replaced. He just can't. He's a unique player that was, you know, there's just not many guys like him. But Lindholm is a, a smart, uh, responsible, uh, two-way center who does get some consideration for the Selkie. He, I mean, he hasn't been real high in the voting, but he has been recognized for, uh, you know, his strong two-way play. So certainly, it fits the mold. I could see him being a good Bruin and uh, working well with the players they have there and the coaching staff. I can see, I just see a good fit. Problem is, is he's made it clear now after interviews that he is very open to staying in Calgary. To be honest, if he is traded, I think that's largely going to kind of come down to money. Um, so that we don't know for sure he's available as of yet. I mean, going into the offseason, there was a talk about Calgary being very, very busy, and there's still a lot of question marks right now around that team. With the Jets and Mark Shifley, we've heard from Elliot Friedman recently that, of course, there's still some uncertainty over whether or not Shifley stays or not. And if he is moved, that the Jets absolutely need center help coming back. They need, they had hoped for Pierre-Luc Dubois and Mark Shifley be their center tandem down the middle for years to come. They had to move move Dubois there's a good chance that Shifley may not want to stay too you know that's obviously a major shift in plans you can't just move both of those guys and not get the big center help coming back I mean they did get Gabe Velarde who can be a center but I mean he might turn out to be better on the wing we don't know yet so at the end of the day Boston doesn't really have the necessary assets to go out and make a real solid pitch for either of those top tier centers so it would make more sense and if they are going to try to get center help that they go down the road of a younger player with a team like this who they might be more willing to accept um, younger picks or prospects as the trade package return. Now, of course, Shane Pinto, we don't even know at this point exactly what he's going to need for a contract. We just know that according to the reports from uh, Ottawa Sun reporter Bruce Garriock that there is a, a sizable contract gap between Pinto and Ascends right now and they have a, a big gap to close to get something done. The Senators also have a limited amount of cap space just shy of $900,000 largely because of the $5 million deal they gave to Vladimir Tarasenko. So we knew right away as soon as that Tarasenko signing happened that that was going to complicate things for Pinto and it was going to cause them to maybe have to make another move to be able to get him signed. Now, according to Bruce Garriock, who is very well connected and uh, you know on the beat for the Senators, the Sens at this point don't have any interest in trading Shane Pinto. So I can understand why teams are inquiring. This is more like a what-if scenario. Uh, Shane Pinto is represented by 
uh, Louis Gross, who has proven to be a very tough negotiator and, uh, you know, certainly some guys that have not been afraid to hold out before, like, for example, William Nylander. Now, of course, Shane Pinto, it's believed based on the speculation that he's going to need a short-term deal uh, around a $2.5 million mark. So clearly the Sens need to shed around $1.5, $1.6 million. There's a variety of ways they could do this. Um, Some feel that Matthew Joseph is the ideal trade candidate, but at the same time he's coming off a year where he was injured and uh, didn't have the greatest statistics either uh, when he was in the lineup. So it was, it was a down year. He was coming off uh, when he first arrived in Ottawa after the, the trade with Tampa involving Nick Paul. Joseph had a flying start and finished really strong with the Sens. Looked like he was going to be a terrific fit there. But at that point in the season, the Sens also had a number of other injuries, and he was getting top six minutes. So he was playing with stronger players, and he fit nicely, finished strong with like about a point-per-game clip. So I think the expectations around Joseph might have been a little too high. Uh, but, you know, at the end of the day, when you come back and you have a top six of, you know, uh, Brady Kachuk, Timmy Stutzla, Claude Giroux, Drake Batherson. Uh, you throw in a mix, Josh Norris, uh, and, of course, Tarasenko. Now they had to brink it last year. He's just not going to get top six minutes, barring injuries. Um, and, of course, Pinto was elevated last year because of the injury to Norris. So, obviously, it was a case of a centerman needing to move up. And Pinto had a good season, his first full campaign, after coming off a major shoulder surgery just like Norris had last year. And he put up 20 goals and 35 points. So, certainly needs a... A fairly healthy raise to be satisfied on his contract, that's no doubt. Um, at this point, like we know there's a gap, but it doesn't mean that there's any animosity. We don't. There's no word of anybody saying that, okay, this isn't going to work out and a trade's going to happen. This is more of a case of teams kind of watching a situation saying, hmm, I wonder if that doesn't get resolved, if we could swoop in and get a deal done. Uh, so according to Boston uh, Hockey Now, article which I'll, I'll mark here in a pinned comment you can read it if you want on your own uh, essentially the source that they uh, were talking to says that you know teams are monitoring the situation and essentially are trying to see if they um, you want to talk to pierre dorian about you know if, if you can't sign him if you get to move him here's what we'll offer you type of thing um you know of course pinto comes to the nhl as the second round pick had a great uh, showing at University of North Dakota for a few years, coming in as a highly touted prospect. His first uh, little bit of hockey he played after signing at the end of his college season. He got a handful of games in and looked really solid. Then, unfortunately, his first full season was supposed to be two years ago, but four or five games into the year, he suffered that major shoulder injury and was out the whole year. Lost a whole year of development. Last year, like I said, he was durable, reliable, played, I think, uh, all or most of the, the 82 games and had a real strong showing. So he's you know, certainly a player that, Teams took notice of. He's good on faceoff. He's smart. He's got a good size, six foot two, around uh, just shy two hundred pounds. Like you know, he, there's a lot to like about this kid. A lot. Uh, and long term, I do wonder, you know, beyond the next maybe couple of bridge contracts, if he does have a long term future in Ottawa because he's going to probably want more of a top six opportunity, and he may not be able to get it because the the as long as the other players that are there now remain there, then it's going to be tough to, to crack into that. Um, pretty deep top six that's already in place. But time will tell. Things can happen. Other things could change. You just don't know. They definitely want to keep them around here in the short term. A team like Boston is rumored to be looking at offering uh, apparently a couple of younger players like a Fabian Lizell, Johnny Beecher, some younger prospects who they may not be sure of that fit in their system long term. Uh, and that would be you know, an interesting pickup. I think Ottawa may want even more than that. Lizell is a player who's I don't know. It's funny because uh, he had a good season with the um, WHL's Vancouver Giants, had a pretty good year in the American Hockey League uh, as well after that. And it's it just looks like um, I'm surprised he's not higher on Boston's radar, which kind of gives me a little bit of a you know concern. But at the same time, everything I've seen and heard about this guy, he would be a good fit. Now, the other part that sources are saying that Ottawa would actually at least be willing to listen on trade talks on Pinto is that because of the fact that they're really high on Ridley Gregg. Uh, Ridley Gregg, of course, was drafted after Pinto, a first-rounder as well. Uh, Another centerman who could really fit that third-line style. He's got some offensive upside, like Pinto does, but at the same time, he plays more of a pesty type um, you know, in your face, you know, a hard to play against kind of guy that can drive you nuts. Uh, not afraid to be physical, uh, just a little different style. 
than Pinto, and they feel like he's going to be just as good. Um, so they're you know, at least willing to listen here while they're having these negotiations with Pinto in case things don't go well. That's that's it. So this is very much doing due diligence at best. That's as far as things are at. But, you know, if the Sens were able to get back a Lizell, for example, the way Lizell plays, he'd probably be an excellent line mate for Ridley Gregg. They both have a strong motor and play a similar style. Um, I mean, if they wanted to consider that, I can see how that might fit. I don't know if it would be a case of Lizell and Beecher. I think they might... I don't know if they'd be high on Beecher. They might be more likely to want a future first or second round pick, uh, something along those lines, maybe a Lizelle in a second. I'm not sure what it would take, to be honest, but at this point, the Sens need space. But their preference is not to move Pinto, especially to a division rival who they're trying to catch for playoffs. I mean, the Sens want to get into playoffs, right? This is what they're building towards. And you've had teams like Tampa, Boston, Toronto ahead of them as the top three teams in this division for some time. And you're finally starting to see a case of there being hope at least. I mean, you can never count the Bruins out. That's for sure. They they know how to win. They still have a lot of good pieces there, even with what they lost this offseason. But, you know, they're looking at this saying, geez, you know, maybe the Bruins finally take a step back. Maybe we can finally get up and grab a spot. They're not going to want to turn around and help make them better, right? So this isn't ideal at all trading in the division. Now, I know they did that with Debrinket in Detroit, but a lot of that had to do with the fact that Debrinket wasn't really interested in signing a contract extension with other teams. He was an RFA and wanted to go to his uh, home state of Michigan. So the Red Wings are the option. And uh, as much as they didn't want to say it, he and his agent basically kind of handcuffed them. And they didn't really have a lot of choice because at the end of the day, yes, he didn't have trade protection, but no team was going to pick him up if they couldn't sign him. And that is well within his right to say, no, I'm not signing. And to kind of force his way, which we've seen the RFA way of doing things now, that's what they do. If they don't want to sign, they just force their way to where they do. It's just that simple. So at the end of the day, They've already done that once to do it again and make you know Boston better. Just doesn't make absolutely any sense. I can understand, though, why the Bruins have interest. Uh, the package they're offering isn't that bad if indeed. Well, I don't think they're offering it yet. That's just the speculation on what they would put on the table if they want to have more serious discussions. I think it's probably my understanding of this article is I think it's very early, very preliminary. This is more of a case of a source hearing from the Bruins that there's in, they're interested, they're watching the scenario, and if it got to that point that they could talk to Pierre and make an offer, that's probably what they'd put on the table to start with. That's kind of where things are at. I think it's very, very early, um, and it's still more likely than not that the Sens move another player, whether it be Matthew Joseph, Eric Brandstrom, or somebody else, to find some cap space to up their offer to Pinto to get him signed and get him into the lineup. Ideally, they'd like to get him signed before their, they have a big charity golf tournament. I think it's like the 18th or 19th of September. Camp opens right after. They, they don't want this to drag into that so he misses time. So I'm sure we're going to see you know, things heat up here and something get figured out within the next week. At least I would think that's pretty likely. No guarantees, of course, and especially where Lewis Gross is his agent. I can see them driving a real hard bargain and really pushing here. But will there be a trade between Boston and Ottawa? I can't say no. I think it's it's maybe at best right now. I understand the interest, but I just I don't think it's in Ottawa's best interest, and it doesn't seem like – it's really trending that way yet. If it came down to it that they felt like they needed to do that, I think they would probably prefer to go outside of the division. Uh, there's certainly plenty of other teams and lots of other uh, teams, I think, in fact, in both conferences that would have a uh, pretty good interest in Pinto where they could also get a pretty good return. Uh, we don't know where Ridley Gregg is going to play yet this year. Is he going to crack the NHL lineup? He could play on the wing. with. He could end up playing with Pinto, to be honest. It's possible. Or maybe he does a little more time in the American Hockey League while they sort things out. They have um, you know a good depth problem within their top nine right now. So we'll have to see where uh, things go and how everything plays out. But certainly an interesting concept. Uh, I just don't know that it's something that we're going to see. But uh, we'll see what happens here between the next little while as the Senators try to work towards a solution with Shane Pinto. But do you see a trade involving Pinto in the Sens? Do you think the Bruins... And their offer makes sense for Ottawa, or if they do lead to this, would they be best to go outside the division and go elsewhere and try to figure out a different type of move if necessary? Or 
Is it likely that somebody else goes and Pinto stays? I think Matthew Joseph is the prime candidate that, that is going to be moved. They might have to add a sweetener because of his down season. But if that's what it takes to keep Pinto, I think you do it. But let me know what you think in the comments, and we'll discuss further. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and stick around. We'll keep you up to date with all the latest news, rumors, and analysis of all 32 NHL teams. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.